In today's video, we'll be learning how to make a rope dress with slit at the side and add headfulness at the rope part only. If you take note, the headfulness is not at either side of this dress. So, if this is something you are interested in, kindly continue watching this video. Greetings and welcome to my channel. My name is Chi. And I'm a female fashion designer based in Bini City. If you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe so you don't miss out on our next interesting tutorial. So quickly, we are going to go to the cutting aspect of this. So first, we are going to be drafting out a basic skirt pattern. We'll be using this basic skirt pattern to alter it into our skirt with the fullness for the rope. So we are going to be using this to draft our basic skirt pattern. From there, we can go ahead to slash and spray our basic skirt. So this here is my waistline. And from there, I came down by 8 inches. Alright. And I got my hip line. You can actually measure from your half length to the highest point of your hip. That point becomes your hip line or your hip point. Alright. So this 8 is not a constant. So from there, I went ahead to measure... The full length of the skirt which is 24 this full length actually includes my turn up allowance of 1.5 inch all right so while marking the full length of your skirt don't forget to add up your turn up or your fold up allowance so from the waist part now i'm going to mark my bust pan measurement divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 my bust pan measurement is actually 7 divided by 2 gives me 3.5 and I'll be adding 0 0.5 to it therefore I would have 4 as my bust pan measurement so this part actually becomes where I would fix in my dart so quickly I'm just going to take my roll and I'll connect this straight down so from this point now I'm going to be using a dart intake of 0 0.75 inch at the both side all right so for the dart it's going to be coming down by five inches so i'll extend my line down to the five inches mark i'm going to connect my dart like this so now i'm going to be marking my waist measurement divided by four which actually gives me seven so now i'm going to be putting back my dart intake else i'm going to be short of fabric if i do not replace back the dart intake i took so for my dart intake, it's actually give me 1.5. So I'm just going to mark 1.5 here like this. This one I'm just marked out now is for my dart intake. So I'm going to be marking my sewing allowance of 1 inch. Alright. So from this part, I'll mark my hip measurement divided by 4, which gives me 9.5 plus my sewing allowance, which is 1 inch. Then going to the down part, I'm going to be marking my hip measurement divided by 4, which is 9.5. So I'm going to be taking out 1.5 inch because I want to have a fitted skirt. So here is my hip measurement point. So from there, I'm just going to come in by 1.5. Now, remember, I actually added the 0 0.5 here for my dart intake. But, but for this skirt, I will not be using a dart for it. So now, I'm just going to take away my dart intake which i took so this is it this place becomes my allowance and i'll connect this like so i'm just going to blend the hip so that we don't have any sharp edges at this point this i forget i actually place this pattern paper on fold so i will just cut this out so before i alter this pattern with our slashes or first place this on my material and i'm going to cut out the back piece All right. so here as you can see i actually placed my fabric on fold and i pinned down my pattern to my fabric so quickly i'm just going to cut my pattern out this is for the back like i said if you want to add a zip allowance to this or a slit to it you can shift it back by one inches before you cut out all right so quickly i'm just going to cut this out following the same shape for the back pattern so here I have actually cut it out for the back pattern. So this is what we have. So quickly I'm just going to unpin my pattern and I'll drop the back piece and we are going to focus on using this as our front pattern. So yes, this is our back pattern now. I'm going to keep it aside 
and now we'll be working with this piece so from this piece now i'm going to be placing your slits either at the left side or at the right side whichever side you want it is fine there's no law that said your slit must be on the left all right so place it anywhere you find comfortable but, with, but wherever you are placing it it should be at this your dark line your dark line is actually your bust pan measurement divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 so i'm just going to extend this dark line down so here this is where your slit should be that way it will not be too close to the front center and it will not be too far from the front center all right this my line is not too straight so i'll advise you use your tape to mark out your four inches straight up before you draw it out because from what i have here now my line is a bit slanted all right so i really advise you place your tape and mark out four inches all through before you connect your straight line down what i have the first line i have here is actually 3.75 so i had to draw this other one so this one now is not right so we are working with the second line so do where to to use your tape to mark out four inches four inches straight down before connecting your dots together with your rule all right so from this point now i'm going to open up my pattern like this and we are going to be drawing slash lines now we are going to determine where your slash lines is going to start from so i'm just going to go up from the down part by four inches now this four inches i'm going up is for the slit at the down so i'm just going to make these four inches here like this for my slit so this would be where my slit would start from so now my slash lines would not get into this point like this now you can decide to open up your dart and transfer the dart ss to this point but meanwhile you can decide to do without your dart ss and just create your slash lines and spray them all right so quickly i'm just going to be drawing my slash lines from here so i'm just going to draw these sizes like this straight up all right so i'll quickly just draw my slash lines and we'll continue oh god i have no place so this is my pattern sorry i had to do this outside the camera so after i've drawn my slash lines like this as you can see i went ahead to tear it up following my boss pan line right so now i'm just going to cut through my slash line all right but while you cut through ensure that you do not cut it through the line all right so quickly i'm just going to cut 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 each one of them i'm going to be cutting for the big piece as well the same way i have done for the small piece right now right so here i have actually slashed this pattern and you can see how easily I can easily spray them because I don't have a lot of it at the edge. I slashed it very close to the end of the pattern, but I did not cut it through the pattern, all right? So since we are making a skirt with excess fullness at just the center and none at the side here, we don't need the patterns to be gapped at this side. We just need the excess fullness, the added fullness at this curved part here. No matter the curve it is giving you here, do not get bothered about it. So quickly, I'm going to slash the bigger part of the pattern and they're going to transfer it to our fabric, all right? I have actually sprayed my patterns on the ground, as you can see. You can see that it's giving a different curve. It's not compulsory for you to cut it together. The only thing that is compulsory here is that while spraying it, the bigger ones will be tempting you to spray the bigger one more like this. Like it still has more spray allowance. I, sh I could still spray it more than this. But then, no matter how you intend to spray it, this curved part should not be longer than this curved part here. So while you spray it, you should ensure that you take your tape and you measure what you have here and what you have here to be equal. Remember, they are going to be joining these two parts together. So if one ends up being longer than the other one, joining it, you'll be having excess at one. So you just quickly go ahead to place your tape like this. I really advise you pin this down, all right? Place your tape like this and make sure what you have here. 
you can see how i am measuring this what i have here is 39 so quickly i'm going to go ahead and make sure what i have for the second side so what i have here is 38 so i'll spray this a bit so that i can get my 39 please do not go ahead to make sure it's straight up like this no ensure you follow the curve all right follow the curve the way you have it it's okay i have 39 here now before you cut this out ensure that you add one inch allowance at this curved part as indicated here as you can see i have just cut it out and while i was cutting it out i actually left one inch for the both of them this one inch is so that i can use it to join it together and to fix my rope in it all right so that was the essence of the one inch i left at this point but for the sides there i did not add any allowance don't forget to notch your slit length like the point where you want the slit to start and where the rope should stop and it will also help you not to mistake the up part for the down part i can unpin my patterns now so you can see what we have this is the shape of what we have for the front pattern we are going to be joining those two plates together and by the time we join them together this place will come out straight right so quickly let's just go to the I cut out a long thread that will be fixing in it to be getting our draw at the front the thread is actually 36 inches long and it is 1.5 inches wide all right I cut two of these so remember this is our damp part where we want our slit to start from and I'm going to be placing the second side together from that point there all right so i'll be starting from this joint here so remember we added one inches when i was drafting it on my pattern so when i put them together like this ensure that it is all it is put equal right when i put it together like this i'm going to be taking out one inch while i sew we're using this one inch as a tube to pass our thread through so now I'm just going to sew. Do not forget to double stitch this point here. Remember, this is the start of the slit. I'm going to sew this all through down to the up part. So here, I have just joined it down like this. Alright. As you can see, it is all equal. When you join it, it will not be straight. Yes, it will be curved like this. So, you are going to top stitch this. But before you do that, I really advise you overlock the edge here but if you don't have an overlocker you can just give it a tiny sew at the edge here like this which is what I'm going to be doing right now I'm just going to sew it like this tiny making sure that where I am folding in is facing my dress all right so quickly I'll just fold it like that so here here is what I did I did not overlock the edge I just folded it tiny in like this as you can see i just did it straight down like this so the next thing to do now i'm going to open it up and i'm going to be sewing at the tip here right so i'll be sewing it at the tip here and i'm going to be sewing it straight down for the both of them this would be the two where we would pass our, our long rope where we can draw it up just in case you don't want to bend it in like i did here you can just use an overlocker and overlock it all right so quickly i'm just going to top stitch the both side of them but while you top stitch please ensure that you don't have any pleated angles and you don't have any folds all right it's going to be trying to fold up because it's not a straight line but you have to really have to arrange it down properly as you sew all right so quickly i'm just going to sew the both side down so here i have actually sewn it down it wasn't easy sewing it down because that part was actually curved and there was no light so i could not iron it down before i proceed so meanwhile this is what the front part looks like so quickly i'm going to take the long lines i showed you initially that i cut out all right so i'm going to be folding it up like this for the top part that i want to be at the down part i'll fold it in like this all right then i'll fold this like this fold again like this then i'll bring the both of them after folding it in wall like this i'll bring them together like so and i'm going to sew it down like this you can decide to sew it as a single piece and 
use your safety pin and turn it but you can actually decide to follow this method right so quickly i'm just going to turn the both of them like i just showed you so here i have just sewn it down you can see i actually stepped on it at the tip all right and i sew this straight down you can see how fine it is i actually have two pieces of it as you can see so now i'm just going to be passing it through the skirt part that we joined all right so now remember i actually finished one edge of it very neatly while i was folding it i show you how how i finished the top part neatly actually passed one of the thread through so for the second one so fix the thread ensure that you pass your septum pin or whatever you are using at the part where you finished neatly all right you can either use your septum pin or you can use a broom pass it through the part where you finish neatly as that part will be the part that will be coming out at the open part of the slit i'm going to be starting from the top but meanwhile to the part where i put my slit i'm going to give it a slight hole please oh, it should not be very big but if you intend to have this rope all through to the end then you can just go ahead to connect it straight to the end so now i'm just going to pass my thread through the second tube like this all right so i'll quickly do that and we'll continue so here after i passed it through immediately i did i have not even arranged it properly but i made sure that I top stitch the both of them down so that I will not have any issue of anyone slipping off. Alright, so now I'm just going to pull this. I'm going to pull it up. And I'm going to spray the effect of whatever I have all through. Don't let the effect to be at just one part, alright? You use your hands to spray the effect all through to all the parts. Using this method, you'd have your added fullness at the side there and the length of your dress would still remain the same. Meanwhile, if you got value from this video, kindly give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and please, you can drop your questions on the comment sections and I will reply them immediately. Make sure you spray it perfectly because that's where the beauty of this dress lies. Please, to make such dresses, ensure you use a light fabric and if you don't intend putting a zipper to yours, ensure you use a stretchy fabric as well. Alright, don't use heavy fabric for this style as the drape effect will not come out perfectly. So, from the look of it, you can testify that we have our gathered folds here. Right, but it's not going to the edge and you can see that we have the shape of our dress back so i actually decided to make it a gown instead of a skirt so i'll just go ahead to join my half length to this and for the shaping i'll just go ahead to take out the sewing allowance i added remember while drafting this dress i added one inch so i'll just go ahead to shape it by one inch all through to the down part so this is all for the dress this is our finished look Thank you so much for watching. If you got value from this video, do share this video, subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.